You're watching Exit 1055 with your host, Richard Rose. And good morning, I'm Richard Rose. Welcome to Exit 1055 Long Island, your show about all things Long Island. In just a little bit, we'll explain how some other states are trying to lure away, some say poach, the top scientific researchers from our leading universities and labs, and what difference that can make to you. But we begin today with the town of Brookhaven's crackdown on star property tax fraud. It follows a report by the New York State Comptroller's Office that as many as 20% of all the people filing each year for this property tax relief under the Star Relief Program are not actually eligible. It's costing the state and local governments and school districts tens of millions of dollars. And just last week, Brookhaven town leaders announced they have identified dozens, if not hundreds, of homes with absentee owners. These are properties that have either been abandoned or converted into illegal apartments. To claim the tax credit, the homes must be owner-occupied. Now lawmakers want to take action. This town is going to crack down. If we have to hire additional people to do that to help the assessor, we will do that. But we are going to send a very strong message. Town officials are warning absentee homeowners that they'll collect the back taxes and even seek prosecution for the worst cases. Now, we couldn't reach the owners of the properties that are being investigated, but a Landlords Association spokesman says this is a thinly veiled attempt by the town to once again go after landlords illegally renting out subdivided apartments to the nearby Stony Brook University students. Well, joining us now are two members of the group, Stony Brook Concerned Homeowners. They are Anthony DeRosa and Bruce Sander. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, gentlemen, nice let's start here. with that question. Is this just another way to go after the property owners who've been in the news many times in the last few years, uh, renting out to college students who are unable to get dorm space at the cramped uh, Stony Brook University? Absolutely well, not. This is an, this is actually came came about as a result of students being forced to park in the street over a snowstorm. That's how this whole investigation started. It started with the fact that um, one of the students complained that the landlord was charging him $25 to park in the driveway, so they all parked in the street. And when we reported this house, this landlord who owns three of these properties, to the town, their question became, wait a minute, I think this landlord is taking a star exemption, and it exploded from there. Yeah, and that's illegal, and they say they're going to investigate that, and they're going to pour through their record to see if anybody else is doing this. Now, the properties we just showed are all owned by a man named Vincent Zhu, I think. Uh, town authorities allege that he improperly filed for the uh, star on one of the properties, as you just mentioned. Uh, I tried to get a comment from him. I reached someone who said they would pass on our, our information, our contact information, but we never heard back. What is the latest on that case, Anthony? Well, the latest is that the town is still looking into him as well as others. Uh, there's quite a few within the town of Brookhaven total that are uh, taking advantage of the star exemption and they shouldn't be. We haven't heard back from the town if in fact he is in violation, but we sure think he is at this point in time. Well, they're going to be cross-checking their records. They, are. they, they are. say that there are abandoned properties that if folks are taking this star cre uh, tax yeah. credit on. Yes, There's even in some cases people are taking the exemptions that are meant for the veterans, which you know is terrible because that should go to the people who serve this country. How does that happen though, that checks are sent to people where the properties have been abandoned or they're not even veterans? It's just, I believe, when they first purchased the house, they don't change the exemption, and the town has not caught it all these years. But now it's becoming a, because of the landlord situation, the illegal tenants, it's become a open topic now. So it changes hands, the property, and maybe it got flipped yes. even, mm -hmm. people who are looking to do what you're talking exactly. about, convert it into illegal apartments, which is a problem on all of Long Island, not it just uh, Brookhaven. Right. How many properties would you say are involved here? When we were at the news oh, yeah. conference, some said dozens, the supervisors being conservative, well, and then others claimed it was hundreds. Well, as far as uh, illegal housing within the area, just within the three village areas surrounding uh, Stony Brook University, uh, we have 251 houses that we have reported so far to the town. 251? Uh, 251. That that what we are they know doing about. about that? Well, they have gotten back to us uh, on 96 of them so far, and really? they now have those houses in compliance. Fines have been assessed. Changes have been made to those homes to accommodate the town, new town codes. Uh, but there's still 155 that we're waiting to hear back from the town on. Well, uh, this matters, though, because this hurts some people. Who does this affect, uh, Bruce? Hurts I mean, it hurts, hurts the homeowners. The value of our properties has, we've seen, besides the real estate de depression, we've seen the value of our properties drop tremendously. And that's a major investment. For most of people who buy our house, that's a major investment. I have two directly across the street from my house. The real estate value of my home has dropped tremendously because who would want to live across the street from two college boarding houses, each having 10 and 15 students each. Well, then it also affects the school districts, I understand. Explain yes. that. Well, it definitely does because you have lower enrollment in the school districts because of the uh, less students going to the elementary schools that we have in our area. 
Uh, so we have to put a stop to this. I mean, it's been going on now for a couple of years. Uh, we have gotten a tremendous support from the town of Brookhaven, Supervisor Romaine in particular. The university is starting to get on board. They're working with us to address the issue. Well, tell us about that, because a couple of years ago, you guys held a news conference with town officials, and you were not happy about what the university Right, exactly. I mean, the university was doing too little too late until we got involved. Uh, now they've stepped up to the plate. They're educating their students on what is it illegal and illegal rentals. They're not posting on their website any longer all rentals. They're clarifying with the town before a house is uh, listed as a rental, whether or not it has a legal permit on file. So Which, by the way, we've, we've uh, gone through uh, the uh, houses that we reported, 251, and I also check on the town website to find out if there's legal rental permits. In probably 60% of the cases, there are no rental permits on file. So you guys are acting like sort of the neighborhood watch, uh, going into the Actually, records, uh, uh, yes. looking for these properties. We kind pull of doing the deeds the... on every property. Yeah. Anthony goes out and pulls the deed on every single property. Once they're identified, we identify them, we report them. Uh, the biggest problem we have is Stony Brook over enrollment. Let's face it, if you had the housing, you shouldn't. You go recruit the kids if you have the housing. You're recruiting kids from all over the country and all over the United States, bringing them to a university when you don't have housing for them. Well, they say they're building some, and they have not more. They that'll accommodate a small portion of what what happened is that they let it, it was allowed to let slide all these years because we did not make an issue the homeowners wasn't noticeable you nowadays. know who's kind of caught in the middle of this and I think everybody feels to them it's the students that don't have any place to go and they're right you know what these are some grumpy neighbors that just yeah. want to pick on us. and they don't know any better yeah students. believe it or not the students are great we do not have problems with the students there are a few party houses here and there but you're gonna have that in any college area yeah that would happen uh, anywhere yes right. and we Correct. and even the students are having problems with some of their landlords they're complaining about roach infected houses cameras houses in not the house. being taken care of yes yeah that's an invasion you can who yes, would want yes. that there's a lot of the students are at risk they're, they're taking a home that had normally a three-family home maybe four students which is the legal limit and they'll put eight students in it so what's next well, honestly okay. there's a few things that we're looking at uh we, well, we might, got 30 seconds so. all right 30 seconds we may be looking into well no, definitely the irs and the new york state tax reporting we want we want to know we don't know if there's an underground economy going on here maybe it needs to be investigated and lastly is possibly a class action lawsuit against the landlords of these properties well anthony derosa and bruce sanders uh sander sorry uh, stony brook concerned homeowners they're fed up they're not going to take it anymore <laughs> i think you'll be hearing more from them thanks for coming on and talking with us today thanks thank you very much and when we return brewing controversy starbucks under fire for what it's asking baristas to write on the sides of their cups